All right, let's head to the United Kingdom now, where news of another interest rate hike today is going to be hitting homeowners hard. But let's start on Prime Minister Rishi Sunak's roof. I'm joined now by a correspondent in London, Ollie Barrett. Ollie, this is extraordinary, the visuals of Greenpeace getting onto the Prime Minister's roof. Has anyone figured out how they were able to get onto the roof without anyone stopping them? Uh, that remains a key question, Sally, which uh, a lot of people are fairly astonished by the lack of security uh, around the Prime Minister's house. This is his house in his constituency in Yorkshire in the north of England. Um, and uh, police have made five arrests after this protest. But uh, that is what has surprised people, is the lack of security that allowed these protesters to gain access to the property, but also just to be able to climb up the outside of the house and unfurl uh, these black uh, curtains effectively in, in protest at what they say is the government's wrong-headed policy on uh, granting new oil and gas drilling licenses. So there are a lot of questions coming from uh, politicians, um, former uh, police officers, for example, about uh, what kind of security is in place around Rishi Sunak's home in Yorkshire. Now, one thing that's worth saying is that he wasn't there, and the protesters say they knew that and had established that he wasn't there before deciding to go ahead with this protest. The Prime Minister is a long way away, actually, in California on a family holiday, the first family holiday he says he's had in uh, around four years because of the pandemic and his various roles at the top of government, but perhaps not the first uh, waking up in California that he was uh, looking forward to on, on that news that he would have been given that there were protesters on top of his house. Yes, uh, absolutely. And also, um, given the security questions, um, the UK Cabinet Office has released a report detailing 89 security threats to the United Kingdom. Um, tell us a little bit more about this. I mean, are we talking intelligence reports about actual planned attacks they've discovered or potential for attacks? Tell us more. Yeah, it's more about the likelihood of risks and what they might pose to the United Kingdom. And it's based on events that have gone before, but also, yes, intelligence gathering uh, and information gathering by all sorts of uh, public bodies across the UK. And there are all sorts of risks that are identified in this list. It ranges from things like extreme climate events to the potential risks from for example, artificial intelligence. It talks about the risks to the UK of drone attacks. It says that the risk of drone attacks is increasing as the use of drones becomes more widespread in conflicts uh, across the world. And it tries to rate the likelihood of the type of risk uh, that is being talked about as well. For example, the assassination of public figures, of high profile public figures is one of those things that is listed. And that's rated as a likelihood of 20 now, that might sound quite high, but the reason they can uh, put that rating on it is because, as I say, of looking at past events. And you'll remember that we saw the assassination of the Conservative MP David Amos uh, just a couple of years ago. And so uh, these officials have taken into, the account, uh, taken into account things that have happened recently and therefore helped use that in their weighting about the likelihood of something happening in the future. That also mm. is applied, for example, to the risks of future pandemics. The government saying that this list is about setting out some worst case scenarios. The likelihood of most of the things on this list is really very low, but the government says it helps government and organisations up and down the country put in robust plans to make sure that they're as prepared as possible for some of the type of things that are on this list. Yeah, absolutely. Got to be prepared. Um, so talking risks, I would imagine that one of the risks uh, a number of uh, Brits are worried about is perhaps losing their house because... The central bank, Bank of England, has hiked interest rates, I think it's the 14th time, to 5.25%. Um, it's really crippling a lot of people in the UK. It, are people having to forfeit their homes? I mean, is that one of the consequences? Has that started yet? 
That has started, yeah. We have seen um, a rise in the amount of uh, homes that are being lost or, or indeed uh, a rise in the amount of people who are saying that they are having to sell their home because they can't afford the mortgage payments anymore. We're also hearing, and we've heard in recent days, that the uh, cooling in the property market is very definitely happening, uh, some percentage points coming off the value of uh, uh, the UK property market uh, and the most expensive homes, but also homes lower down at the market chain as well because it is just becoming harder and harder to afford mortgage payments for many. Uh, the people who are really finding themselves in, in, in the most urgent difficulties at the moment are people who are either on a variable tracker rate that follows the central bank rate and has just been going up and up and up as you say 14 times in a row now and just means huge amounts more in their monthly outgoings or people who are coming to the end of their previous mortgage deal that they might have arranged with a bank when interest rates were at historic lows and again now finding that their mortgage payments are going to jump significantly so it is leading to a lot of pain for a lot of households depending on their exact circumstances the other side of that coin that we should point out is that if you are a saver if you have savings rather than large amounts of debt then this is potentially good news for you because uh, if the banks pass on these rate rises to their consumers it is going to mean better rates for people who have money in the bank so there are two sides to that mm. equation uh, but certainly for a lot of people for a lot of business Businesses, households, people who have debt of one sort or another, uh, this is going to pile on the pain. And are more interest rates hike, heights likely? Um, here in South Africa, we think we might have reached the top. We'll probably stay where we are before uh, hopefully it starts to come down. What's, what's the likelihood of this being the top um, in the UK? Yeah, market expectation now seems to think that around 5.6, 5.7% might be the top, so there might be another one or two rate hikes to go. We heard from the Bank of England central governor today, Andrew Bailey, and he certainly was signalling that it might be that interest rates are at around the level that they are now for a little bit longer than people have been expecting. So it might not necessarily be about how high they go, but it might be about how long they remain at the kind of level they are at, because I think for a, a period of months now, market expectations and potentially the expectation of homeowners and people who have debt is that once inflation starts to come down, the bank might start cutting interest rates very quickly. Well, I think the Bank of England in its, um, in its literature today and in the words from Andrew Bailey was signaling really that that expectation might need to be tempered a little bit and so that interest rates might remain where they are or uh, about where they are for a little bit further. If you wanted some good news out of what happened today, the Bank of England does believe that inflation is going to start falling fairly rapidly now. It does believe that inflation will be down below 5% by the end of the year from around 10% where it is now. It does believe that inflation will be below 3% by the end of next year uh, but as I say it, it looks like interest rates will have to stay yeah. quite high uh, compared to recent history anyway uh, to get the UK economy into that position. Yeah so everyone will have to hold on just a little bit longer. Thank you so much Ollie Barrett coming to us live from London.